So yeah, a true changer of the world, and he is continuing to, to change all of us with wonderful vehicles he has brought to us, a space launch system which is efficient as nothing before, new people on the on the space uh, from US ground after the space shuttle, and I could go on for half an hour, but I don't do that. Welcome, big hand, to Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, John. <laughs> oh, how are you? Uh, good. Fantastic. <laughs> we, have, we, have had oh, two, we have two days of AI and Gen AI and whatever, but you look real. <laughs> Um, my head is very big in the screen, and in reality, too, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Elon, we um, have had so much talk about AI in these two days, so we need your okay. opinion. Really? What do you think about the next five to ten years on AI? Please give us a view. Artificial insemination? Artificial intelligence. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but try, try audience, I must say. Um, so, um, yes, artificial intelligence um, is, um, <laughs> is, is certainly going to profoundly change the world. I mean, one of the most significant ways is self-driving. Um, so we've been putting a lot of effort into self-driving uh, technology for cars. Um, you, you don't see it quite as much in Europe um, because we, we first have to make it work in the US uh, before we uh, increase the complexity of trying to make it elsewhere in the world. Um, but I think we're quite close to having the car be fully autonomous. So for example, like right now, I could, I'm in Austin, and if I wanted to drive, say, to the airport, the car could take me to the airport with no interventions. Uh, using, and all it's using are digital neural nets, in other words, artificial intelligence, and cameras. So there's no LiDAR, radar, nothing. Uh, and in fact, if you think about how um, humans drive cars. Humans are biological neural nets, and we use eyes. So it's the eyes and bi bi biological neural nets. The analog is, or digital, <laughs> the analog for digital, uh, is cameras and uh, digital neural nets. Uh, this is working remarkably well. The, it has been quite difficult to do this because it turns out that in, in order to use the, in order for this to work, the car has to really be quite fully intelligent. Really, as, as a subset, for example, it has to learn how to read everything and, and, and how to assess intention among drivers and, and pedestrians. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, 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 it's you, you end up creating sort of a baby artificial general intelligence to solve this. But th this will obviously be extremely profound. Um, and, and obviously I'm talking about automotive here. I'll get into the broader question in, in a minute. Um, but the uh, the average use of a passenger vehicle is only about 10 hours per week out of 168 hours. At the point at which it is autonomous, I think you would see probably a third of the hours being used because it would be like a taxi. Uh, yeah. uh, so maybe my guess is like 50 to 60 hours, which means that the utility of a passenger vehicle would increase by uh, a factor of five. Um, and um, this is this is gigantic. Um, but we'll see. So, so that that's the automotive. Then there's what people I think have, have certainly experienced online, where you can ask it a question and ask for an essay or um, a picture or to understand a picture, um, and that is progressing rapidly. But what, what I'm seeing in terms of AI compute is I, I've never seen any technology advance faster than this. The the, the artificial intelligence compute coming online appears to be increasing by a factor of 10 every six months. Like, now obviously that cannot continue at such a high rate for forever or, or it will exceed the mass of the universe, but uh, I've never seen anything like it. And this is why you see NVIDIA's uh, market cap being so gigantic, because uh, they currently have the best neural net uh, chips. I mean, I think the didn't Nvidia's market cap exceed the GDP of Canada or something recently? Anyway, it was quite high. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, you know, it, <laughs> it may go higher. Who knows? Um, 
the, the, the chip rush is um, bigger than any gold rush that has ever existed. Um, so, and then there will also be robots, like humanoid, humanoid robots, not not just sort of industrial 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 robots. We are of course familiar with. You use industrial robots. We use industrial robots. Everyone does. But they are very they're programmed explicitly, and they don't, they don't walk around. But Tesla, with uh, for example, with the Optimus program, uh, it is making a humanoid robot that is capable of doing almost anything a human can do. Um, I mean, I hope. I just hope the hope the robots are nice to us. You know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. We hope so too, Elon, that the robots will be yeah, nice yeah. to us. And maybe, let's say, in this regard, because you are working on Optimus, um, what can we expect <laughs> in terms of, let's say, support which is going to come? Maybe also a little bit with regard to um, production, um, because uh, in the Bosch Connected world, we were also discussing application of AI, Gen AI, into production. Uh, in order to uh, boost yeah. productivity, maybe a couple of thoughts on this one too. Well, I, the, the plus side of AI is that I think productivity will increase dramatically. Um, so, across every field, um, whether it be manual labor to supply chain logistics, um, there's already a lot of uh, movement to use. Um, chatbots, like sophisticated chatbots for customer service, for example, uh, where they can answer quite quite complex questions already. But I, I mean, I think we really are on the edge of probably the biggest technology revolution um, that has ever existed. You know, there's supposedly a sort of a Chinese curse, may you live in interesting times. Well, we live in the most interesting of times. The most interesting. Um, and for, for a while there, I was a little bit, it was making me a bit, a bit depressed, frankly, because I was like, well, will we be, will they take over? Will we be useless? Um, but then the way that I reconciled myself to this question was, would I rather be alive to see an AI apocalypse or not? And I'm like, I guess I'd like to see it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, you know, that, that's a good it's thought. Not be because, uh, that's a good thought because you mentioned it tenfold every six months. That's an exponential curve, right? Exponential curves are beautiful, like but there's so. kind of a question: Where does it ever end, right? Do you see any end yet, or will it go on for three, four, five years like this? Because then we talk hundred folds, right? Thousand folds of time. Um, yeah, that, that, of that's why I said obviously. You, you, yeah, I mean, you, you can't you can't grow at that rate without quickly exceeding the mass of the universe. So clearly, it's, it's going to hit some constraints. The constraints that uh, AI compute and very predictable. I've actually predicted this over a year ago. Um, so over a year ago, the shortage was chips, um, a, a ch neural net chips. Uh, yeah. Then I, I, it was very easy to predict that the, the, the next shortage will be voltage step down transformers. Yeah. So, because <laughs> exactly. you get, you've got to feed the power to these things. Yes. So, if you've got 100 to 300 kilovolts coming out of your a utility, and it's got to step all the way down to, you know, 0.6 volts, that's a lot of stepping down. So, now we're in step down, and I, this is my not that funny joke, which is that they need transformers to run transformers. Because, um, you know, the AI is like, there's this thing called a transformer in AI. Um, <laughs> It's a it's a neural, a neural I don't know it's a, a combination of sort of neural nets, um, and they're running out of transformers to run transformers. Then the next shortage will be electricity. So I think next year you'll see the electricity that they just can't find enough electricity to run all the chips. I mean, during the chip crisis, we certainly all did have many contacts. Fortunately, we were able to master it together. Of course, we all would like uh, to avoid a second chip crisis. But with regard to your, com uh, to your comment on, on power demand, um, we all know today vehicles have uh, three uh, to four kilowatt power demand for the peripherals. Uh, but this is continuously going up. And Tesla um, has recently launched the Cybertruck, which I believe is mostly coming with 48 volt. 
Uh, do you see this as yeah. a, let's say, further disruption of automotive industry, uh, another technology change uh, within automotive? Yeah, I, th I think, it, you know, the, the automotive industry has been living with 12 volts for a very long time, <laughs> a century roughly. Um, right. I think it, it started off as six volts and then they needed a, a more powerful um, starter motor and then they doubled it to 12 volts, although it's, it's actually more like 13.7 volts. <laughs> You're right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, and the bus voltage actually varies a lot for those, since there's probably some electrical engineers in the audience. <laughs> it's like 12 volts is a very rough approximation. Um, but it's, 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 really, it's really kind of an arbitrary low voltage. Um, and if you look at, say, power Ethernet, it, it's running at 50 volts or roughly 48 volts. Um, and we set it at 40, 48 volts because anything really above that, you start to run into regulatory concerns. Um, and, and power Ethernet is, like I said, roughly at that level. Um, but the advantage of obviously uh, quadrupling the voltage is that um, you can substantially reduce how much copper uh, or, or conductor is used right. in the car. So you can use very small copper wires for, um, you know, it's a rough, roughly... A roughly a quarter, not exactly a quarter, but roughly a quarter as much as, as much copper is needed uh, for 48 volts as for 12. Um, so I think it's a, it's a logical move. Um, uh, that's, that's, that's really the next step for the low voltage architecture for the car. I think um, ultimately long term all cars will be 48 volts. Mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting that um, many people love electric vehicles and want to have them, but some are harmed by a missing infrastructure. That would be the same, actually, as the AI thing. We will have lots of chips ready, but we will not have the power to, to operate them. There's a race between infrastructure and technology right now. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you're also certain technology may win, which is a problem, because actually infrastructure should win. We should have all the infrastructure we need. Is that correct? Yeah. Are you talking about, like, sort of charging infrastructure for cars and that kind of thing? Um, well, the, the reason Tesla developed the uh, sort of global supercharger network was specifically to address that point, uh, the point you're making, which is uh, people need to be comfortable that they can travel long distances um, and charge their car wherever they go. Um, now, fortunately, you, you, electricity is, is almost everywhere. Um, and so it's, uh, you know, it's, just, it's not, well, not all that rare unless you're really far out in the countryside or something. Um, so... Yeah, um, you, you need the super. You need, you need you need the charging infrastructure and like the electricity to, to charge electric cars. In fact, the, the, the simultaneous growth of electric cars and um, AI, both of which need electricity, both of which need voltage transformers, um, actually, I think is creating a, a tremendous demand for electrical equipment and for uh, power, electrical power generation. Maybe one more question, Elon, with regard to. Um, new vehicle designs coming to the market. Of course, you cannot share with us uh, confidential secrets, uh, but, but anyways, Absolutely. what are the things you believe, let's say, we will see over the next years in the market? And maybe just um, a small comment. In Europe, we see a shortage of affordable battery electric vehicles um, in the offerings, uh, because many people in Europe are only able to spend like 20,000, 25,000 euros uh, for their vehicles. So, so what are the new vehicle types, vehicle designs you, you are thinking about at Tesla? Well, our next generation vehicle will be a, a, low, a lower cost vehicle. Um, but one also that is very focused on autonomy. Um, like I said, the... Uh, we're, we really are um, getting to the point where the car can drive itself well. Um, when you're in the in the U.S., I would recommend perhaps giving, a, you know, trying out our car and see how, seeing how it works. Um, it's remarkable, uh, you know. It, it, as the AI gets better and better, it actually feels quite human-like in the way that it drives. It, it does things that you wouldn't expect a computer to do. It, it's it's not like a robot dancing, you know. It's like it feels smooth. And, and intuitive. Um, so our next generation vehicle, um, 
which we're, we're quite far along on, is, is very much anticipating auto autonomy. Um, and then, of course, we've got some fun things as well, like our, our, um, the new Tesla Roadster, which will be able to do zero to 100 kilometers in under one second. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. You know, that's, that's good what news. we need. That's good news. Yeah, that, that's so we're doing some fun stuff too, you know. So that, that's the that's the that, that's the dessert. That's the cherry on the cake, you know. Exactly. Uh, but it's it's fun. You're gonna have fun stuff too. Yeah. Right. No, that's very good news because in the end there's a lot of people here in the room that still are on the list to buy an electric vehicle and you just announced something which they probably want to buy. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. All right. And uh, thank you extremely for 15 years of partnership and work together. We're inspired always yeah. by your speed, attitude, aggressiveness, and things come out. Thank you very much to Elon Musk. All right, and thank you for your support. Very, very much appreciated. Thanks, everyone.